Hola, buenos días. Es con grande placer que estoy aquí hoy con usted. Muchas gracias a vicerrectora Universidad Rosario, principalmente a profesor Benjamín por su invitación. Y ahora, si me permitéis, que voy a cambiar a inglés porque mi portuñol es flaco para, para una presentación científica. So, thank you very much all for being here. It's, it's a great honor to be here and see this room full of people engaged on climate change. Things uh, about climate change are becoming very political, as you do know. Um, sometimes politicians are slow to take action, so it's, it, it's a great pleasure to see the room full of people engaged to pressure and to put the politicians on the same page to support enable conditions and transitions. Um, specifically, I'll be talking today about IPCC, uh, our principles, our structure, and then I will move specifically to the special report on climate change and land. Unfortunately, I won't be able to present any conclusions or any preliminary findings because the report is still under development and will only be approved in August and published in September. Nonetheless, I will tell you what you will be able to find in the report. So, last year, IPCC celebrated 30 years old. Um, we were founded and created by U UNEP, the United Nations Environmental Protection Agency, together with the World Metropo uh, Meteorological Organization. Um, we do got the Nobel for Peace in 2007, and we do include over 195 countries worldwide. Um, two uh, basic things about climate change, and uh, sometimes is mistaken. Uh, we are policy relevant, but are not policy prescriptive, meaning we do bridge the gap between science knowledge and politicians to help decision makers to have science-based policies, but we do not actually substitute local governments or local governments. On the second point that usually is mistaken, IPCC does not develop original research, unless you think assessment could be an original research. We do evaluate available literature on a certain topic, and we critically assess it. So when People here, specifically on media, eventually IPCC scenarios say, actually, IPCC scenarios don't exist. IPCC says what the literature available on scenarios say. So just to clarify this, these two important points. So IPCC has a very flexible structure, and personally, it took me more than six months to understand it. So I hope that in two minutes, I'm able to explain it to you. It's very flexible, meaning that every cycle, which is six, seven years, we change the, the governance, we change the leadership, we change uh, our offices. So we have the headquarters, the secretariat, which you can see here on the top. We are based in Switzerland. And then we have three working groups. The working group one dedicated on science of climate, interactions with atmosphere and greenhouse gases, The second working group is dedicated to adaptation. The third working group is dedicated to mitigation, and that's where I'm, I'm based. On the top of these three working groups, we have the task force for inventory, which is for most of students studying environmental science and, and developing life cycle assessments and inventories. You probably had to read the inventories and the methodological reports on, on, on emission factors, for instance. So, as I mentioned, um, I'm based in the working group three, working on mitigation. And currently, in this cycle, each working group has two different offices, one in the North Hemisphere and another one in the Global South. We work in cooperation to develop the reports. IPCC is very strong in keeping a regional balance and making sure everyone is on board. Therefore, we always have regional balance in that. In this sense, uh, Working Group 3 is currently based in the UK and in India, and we work in partnership with those two countries. After the synthesis report in 2022, 
there will be new elections and all the structure will change and new countries will be in charge of working groups and eventually Colombia could be hosting one of those working groups. So, as I mentioned, IPCC is the unique UN body that bridges the gap between science and policy making. So, we have everything that is developed by scientists and authors is then discussed and approved in a plenary with the 195 countries members of, of the panel. So, we see here on the left side uh, a plenary, a room with the bureau and with negotiators, and on the right side, the meetings we have with scientists to develop the reports. And that's make sure that we are actually compromising science knowledge and decision makers and different compromises in terms of sustainable development. So in this cycle, we are in the assessment report six cycle. So it means we had five before and we are on the seven. And in this cycle, the panel requests scientists to develop three special reports on the top of the contributions for the assessments. Uh, the one that you probably already read and it was widely announced in media is a special report on 1.5 global warming here. Working Group 3 has the governance of the special report on climate, uh, climate change and land, the one on the left, and that's the one I will devote my attention today. And we have a third special report dedicated on uh, oceans that has the government of Working Group 2 that will be adopted and published in September, October this year. So there's still work in progress on that one. So on the top of the special reports, we do have the working group contributions for the assessment reports, meaning that each working group develops one large report over 1,000 pages dedicated to assess sectorial measures and specifically on, on mitigation. That report for the working group three will be kicked off this April. We are having the first author meeting in Scotland and will be approved in 2021. So IPCC, as I just mentioned, has political relevance, and this is a very good example of, in the, in the past, previous reports always had serious implications and, and impacts on, on, the, on the climate change negotiations. Uh, for instance, um, the Kyoto Protocol came after the second assessment report, and the fifth assessment report uh, was an input for the Paris Agreement. So we wonder what will be the large impact in terms of climate change negotiations and climate policy that the AR6 will have in, in the world. So here I show a very simplified timeline of all the stages. How do, how do we develop the report, you may wonder. So firstly, um, the plenary. And when I mean plenary, I mean 195 countries that are part of the panel. They, they invite and they request scientists to develop the report. And, do they, and then they, do, they define the scope of that report. Then IPCC opens a call to invite all scientists who want to be part of the report. Just to have an idea for the latest report, we receive over 800 applicants and less than 200 authors can be selected. So it's highly competitive, but, uh, and at the end, it's highly gratifying in the way. So once we define the scope of the report, and once we define the team, we have four uh, leading author meetings, meaning that the scientists meet four times face to face to develop different drafts. And each of the meetings, here uh, produces one draft and this draft is open for review worldwide and each of you can actually has experts contribute and review. Uh, we last time and I have a slide on that we receive over 15,000 comments 
and each of, that, of those comments need to be answered. And then they will be publicly available as an annex of the report. So this just shows how transparent the process is. So once we have different drafts developed and they are expert, expert reviewed and by policymakers, we develop the final distribution draft that then is accepted and approved in the plenary and then the report is published. So this is the official stage of the report, but in reality, things are a bit different. This figure was published in 2004 by a former colleague that worked in IPCC. And things are tensions. We are working against time. Uh, you put together in a team of 20 people that you never met before with different expertise background, uh, economists with social science, with hard engineers, people from different regions with different perspectives. Um, I, I, I want to remind you that IPCC authors are volunteers, so they are not being uh, they are not being paid to develop this hard work. And some institutions actually do not release time. And uh, scientists they have lectureships, they have other project management commitments. Uh, we are all human beings, so we have families. I particularly enjoy the one that says. Uh, the wife of one of the author's threats with divorce here because you spend all your time traveling without sleeping. But um, despite all the adversities, uh, when we run a survey, uh, one of the scientists said, if, if I would if be invited to do it again, I would do it again because it's probably the most important thing I've done in my life. So it's very rewarding, but um, hard work. So I will then, in my next slide, specifically focus on the special report on climate change and land. Um, and I will also explain why we are here and what's the Latin American uh, component and in, in the report. So um, in 2015, IPCC was invited to develop special, three special reports. And out of that, we had uh, more than 20 potential topics for the special reports. And in Nairobi, in the section in 2016, uh, we received over 20 topics for the report. And out of those, most of them were regarding land. So I have here in this slide all the topics that were received in 2016, so requests from governments. Uh, to develop the special report. And those were aggregated in the transparent and open um, strategy or criteria, meaning uh, what's new in science? How can the working groups collaborate together? Because the special reports have a governance of the all three working groups on science, adaptation, and, and mitigation. And how can we actually develop the report that has a flow with so many different topics? So for the special report on land, um, several countries, um, Saudi Arabia, uh, Switzerland, uh, Brazil, uh, and together with the UNCN uh, report here on climate change and land degradation, there was an agreement made saying then a report on climate change and land and the interactions between these two spheres would be the most important and most updated and where we have knowledge gap in science. So we close the topic. So once we decide the topic of the special report, we had a meeting with over 100 experts to develop the scope. So we have the title, we have the topic, but what will be actually included in the report? And all these documents I mentioned, you can download and see in the IPCC webpage. So we met in 2017 in Dublin uh, in intense discussions to see what would be relevant, how to structure the report, how many chapters, how many pages. And once we have the science agreement on the scope of the report, then the IPCC working groups took it to the plenary. And that happened a few months after in Guadalajara in Mexico. And uh, governments agreed. So you see here uh, the plenary. This is how it looks. And on the right side, the working group three team, uh, after a long and tender session, 
This was probably taken at 1 a.m. in the morning, where there was gridlock still to be defined about tweaks uh, in, in, in the report content. So once we got improvements, we got title officially, and I have to go back to read because I can't tell it without briefing one. So it's climate change and land and IPCC special report on climate change, desertification, land degradation, sustainable land management, food security, greenhouse gases, fluxes, territorial ecosystems. I invite you to tell you by heart without briefing. <laughs> so it just shows how challenging this report is because in the end, each of the different chapters could be a report per se, but we didn't have the capacity to develop that. So now what we are actually facing is how to have a flow, how to have a narrative in so different and strong chapters in the report. So this was the, the table of content agreed. So um, as usual, we have an introduction that frames the context. Uh, we have a final chapter that talks about emerging risks, enable conditions and policies. And then we have uh, chapter two that discussed the land and climate interactions and three big chapters. One dedicated on the certification, another one on land degradation and the chapter five on food security. So once we have these different chapters, now is the authors and the teams who will develop the content and the sections in each chapter and have an integration between the different uh, chapters and content. So now if I do think time allows, I will go through one of the single chapters and to explain what will be included in one of them. And again, I'm not able to show any preliminary results or findings. I'm showing what actually has been approved in the scoping meeting, and I invite you to download the document if you want to know further on what will be included. So the chapter one details the framing and the context, and I shouldn't be detailing much about it because we have two authors from this chapter here who probably know more details than, than myself I do. But in the introduction, you need to show the key concepts, uh, the narrative, explain what will be said in, in the report. And we do have cross boxes examples, and one of those is on scenarios that actually shows the narrative and makes the mapping of the report so people understand what will be uh, available in, in the following. Chapter two details the climate change interactions, how land interfere with climate and how climate affects land. What are the fluxes of greenhouse gases? What are the threats, impacts and risks on climate change and the, the impacts of land, land use change on, on climate? So after this chapter, we have one entire chapter dedicated on desertification that will detail and specifically look at hotspots and tipping points uh, in the world. So this report will, unlike past reports in IPCC, will have a stronger regional component because the governments ask us exactly to know what are the highest risk regions in the planet and how we can actually interfere with enable conditions and policies which are dependent on specific context and regional aspects. So we have a similar chapter on chapter five, very dedicated to land degradation. And in, in, in that sense, we do have a strong visibility of Latin America on this. One of the CLAs is from the region, from Brazil, and um, we will have different case studies and analysis on Latin America in this chapter. Chapter five is dedicated to food security. It actually discussed about mitigation and adaptation strategies under different climate regimes. So scenarios with different global warming temperatures, how can we adapt, how can we mitigate our impacts, how can we shift our diets, what are the negative impacts, how can we have just transitions when we move to um, a less meat intense diet, for instance. Chapter six details uh, and quantifies the interlinkage between uh, integrated responses. So it compares um, 
demand-side responses with supply-side responses. It discussed considerably the potential for uh, neutral emissions based on, on, on negative emission technologies. It discussed interactions with land competition and, again, pressure and interactions with other sustainable development goals. So after this, uh, we have the chapter seven, which will be the one that will detail the enable conditions and policies to make possible the required change present in different, in, in the previous chapters. So what's innovative in, in this report? And in my view, I highlight a couple of points. So it has the governance of the three working groups so it actually means we are looking at adaptation and mitigation issues in an integrated way. And in science, usually these two different societies, they don't uh, see each other or they don't interact much because it's a different scope, different methods. Uh, adaptation tends to be a more qualitative analysis while mitigation tends to be more quantitative analysis. But we can't have one without the other. So this report will put on the same page these two different dimensions that need to be looked at the integrated way to have policies that can actually support both. On the top of that, uh, we have involvement of social scientists. IPCC in the past have been criticized of being at least working group three, has been criticized in the past of having too much focus on what's called hard engineers and only a few visibility of economists were disregarding other social science. So in this report and in this specific cycle, we have an extra effort to include more social scientists on board and that are actually essential to assess um, our needs to change consumption patterns, behavior change, etc. And the last point I'd like to highlight is IPCC core focus is on climate where we can't disregard our sustainable development goals. So if you go back, to the scope, the scope report of this meeting, you will see every single chapter with a specific and explicit mention on sustainable development goals and co-benefits, interlinkage, uh, trade-offs. And actually, in IPCC, we can't say trade-offs is uh, adverse side events, where actually means potential negatives and how to overcome those. So this was the fourth the author meeting that we had last week in Cali. Uh, thank you for the Colombian government for hosting us and for all the hard work in operations and organizing. This is the team. Uh, over 133 authors and the steering committee gathered for one week to develop the final um, government distribution document that will be approved in August. So I mentioned before about the comments, and this second order graph received uh, 15,000 comments that, as I mentioned, every single comment needs to, be, uh, needs to be answered in a transparent way and needs to be agreed in the team, and all, all, all the comments and all the responses will be available. So I don't know if you ever had the chance to, probably did, if we are in, among scientists, uh, you get uh, pressurized when you receive five, ten comments in a, in a research paper that you publish and some are negative. Imagine having an average of 200 per person to be answered. Uh, it's challenging and we have about six weeks to do all this. And the top countries that, uh, that provide reviews were uh, the US, UK, Belgium, Australia, Brazil, China, Germany, Indonesia, among others. So we foresee they will be the most active and energetic uh, in our plenary for the approval. So what are the next steps, you may ask? So as I mentioned, we have until 14th of April to develop a fine governmental distribution document that will then be sent by the 195 country members. And at the same time, we have to reply to over 50,000 comments. And when we have an IPCC special report, uh, we are actually have different components on that. So we have the report within the chapters. We have a summary for policymakers, 
and we have a technical summary. So all these documents are currently being developed and designed. Uh, we are meeting next month for a right shop to develop a special of the, the summary for policymakers. And at the back stage, the working group three, together with other working groups, will be developing the, the technical summary. So we will meet in August in IBCC plenary for the final approval, and the report will be uh, available online and public, publicly available in September. So in my last few minutes, I'll just explain who is involved, and in my last slide, how you can actually be more engaged in IBCC activities, if time allows. So we have uh, over almost 90 authors in this report and 30 from Latin American Caribbean women. And in IPCC, uh, the criteria for selection is actually to have um, expertise balance, as I mentioned, original balance, uh, gender balance. So uh, we have all this balance very balanced because it's very difficult to have uh, a stabilized and a concrete team within different chapter. So we were a bit behind and there's room for improvement in terms of gender balance, but our working group three in this report did very well in having a balance, original balance. So we have um, expertise and representatives from different regions in each report. So my last one, how you can be engaged and specifically in, in this work in this assessment report cycle that we are going on. So the most obvious way would be becoming an author, but I'm afraid the selection process already closed. But there are still chances to be to be involved and the most upfront one is actually to publish. Publish high good quality uh, papers relevant on your field that can then be assessed uh, by the authors in IPCC report. Um, specifically focus on knowledge gaps. This special report identified serious knowledge gaps where the science still needs more, needs more research to actually reach uh, more certainties about climate change and land. So addressing those the knowledge gaps would be a good way to be involved because your, the papers developed will be included in the working group three contribution to the assessment that will skip off in, 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 in April. Another way to be included is being a uh, contributing author. Um, we do our best to have a wild expertise in the chapters, where sometimes there's just a case that we need to develop a section or a few paragraphs and we don't have the internal capacity in the chapter. In that sense, contributing authors are actually filling that specific gap. They are not allowed to join the meetings, they are not allowed to join discussions, but they do contribute with a block of text assessing something very specific, and usually it has to come in a very short time, two or three days, maximum one week, so it's running against the clock. A good example is actually chapter five on food security. We are having uh, a section or paragraphs about just transitions regarding to food and we don't have the capacity in our chapter and we invite a contributing author to help on that. And another way to be involved is, is reviewing the draft. Uh, for this one we won't have more, uh, we won't have any other open uh, review process where as I mentioned the big report, the assessment report year 6 is kicking off in April and we are having three open reviews and everyone can contribute to make the, the report more robust and, 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 and compiled in a way. So I think this is my last slide. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. And I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.